hamstring stretch, placing the right leg on the box, and gently getting your balance as well. Flex the foot, place the hand on the knee, and gently leaning forward with a straight back. So we've got to make sure that the back is absolutely straight. If the back starts to tense up in the lower back here, then we bend a little bit. If there's tension in the upper back, we can round a little bit. So keeping the hips absolutely square, it's very important that we follow a three-point stretch system here. Press the hip into the floor. Press the hip, same hip, on the right leg slightly backwards while pressing through the right heel. It's extremely important to get the stretch because it really works into the hamstring proper. What we'd like to do is, if it is too tight in the hamstring, bend the knee very slightly. So breathing in through the nose for a five-second count and a deep sigh out of the mouth for a five-second count. And as you sigh, lean the chest forward but not downwards. Keep growing tall, as tall as possible out of the hips when stretching. Take a deep breath in. How does that feel? And a deep sigh out as you lean forward. As this gets easier, then we can take the leg higher. Okay? The stretch is generally done 10 breaths in and 10 breaths out. Then we change legs and go into the next leg. Okay? And if you can change. Keep in mind, wherever your eyes go, your body follows. So, Joe, if you can look up to me, and you'll notice that the back also lengthens up. So whenever stretching, always look up. Never look down, because then you start to bend down. So keep your eyes up and lengthen the body, lifting up the chest. And as I mentioned, if the back tightens up, just round it slightly. Taking a breath in without moving, keeping the shoulders square, and a deep sigh out. It's extremely important to make sure that the foot is also flexed to get more stretch. But if you do feel it more behind the knee, bend the knee. The next stretch is for the quadriceps, which are the ones which tilt the pelvis forward too much, and we want to lengthen them up so we can actually loosen up the lower back. So let's get into position. Again, Brooke will be demonstrating for those people who are very tight in the lower backs, and Joe for those who have got a little bit more give in the thighs so they can actually stretch a bit more. So coming up into position, placing the hands on the knee to start, and now let's get the hand on the buttock of the thigh being stretched. So in Joe's case, the right hand on the right buttock, and placing the other hand with the fingers just above the pubic bone. Keeping the shoulders relaxed, keep a lean forward of the torso, which actually lengthens up the back and opens up the lower back, and then a tuck of the pelvis. This is not a thrust, and it's not a lunge. It's a small tuck of the pelvis, and should get an enormous stretch, up to an eight or a nine level even out of 10, on the front of the thigh. How does that feel? Yep, good. Taking a breath in without moving and a deep sigh out with a tuck. Okay, as you can see, there is no lean of the body. It's only a hip movement. Breathing in and a deep sigh as you tuck. The same with Brooke. It's a press down of the buttock and attempting to draw the pubic bone up towards the navel. If there is any pressure in the knee whatsoever, don't do this exercise. Again, taking a breath in without moving, a deep sigh out on the tuck. Change. One more breath in, and one more breath out. Not so fast, Joe. I know it hurts. <laughs> We're going to go into the next one now. Okay, change legs. Place the hands on the floor. The foot should also be comfortable on a piece of padded um, chair will do. Taking a breath in. So hands in position, the hand on the buttock of the thigh being stretched. Breathing in without moving, and a deep sigh out. Keep looking upright and lean the shoulders forward more so that the back lengthens up. And another breath in, and a deep sigh out. With the hand on the buttock, make sure that the hand is actually placed on the buttock below the bone level. If it's placed above the hip bone, you can actually push into the back and arch the back. So it's important that the hand is actually on the buttock for the tuck. Trying not to round the shoulders too much. One more breath in and a deep sigh out. Okay, relax, placing the hands on the floor to come out of the position, and let's go into a pelvic curl. So, we can move the box over for Brooke. Lying on your back with your head up at that end. 
This time there is no cushion underneath the head as there is little tilt of the pelvis. If the neck is extremely arched, then we will place a flatter cushion underneath the head. Okay, and relax. Right, now the pelvic curl is literally a very, very tiny curl. So it's a breath out with a little bit of a tilt, as much as that. Taking a breath in as you imprint your spine back down onto the floor. And in Joe's case again, breathe in, Breathe out as you tilt, drawing the hip bones towards the rib cage. Breathe in as you lengthen the spine away from you. Breathe out as you curl the hip bones to the rib cage, so you're shortening the distance here. Breathe in as you lengthen the hips away without allowing the back to arch. Another breath out, and another breath in. Keeping the abdominals firm at all times. And again, curl the hips towards the rib cage and slowly release, keeping the abdominals in control. And one more, breathing out as you curl the hips towards the ribs, and slowly down. Just to recap here, if there is any pressure at all in the back, don't curl up so high. And slowly go down. As this exercise gets easier and the back loosens up, then you are allowed to go up a little higher. If you do go higher, take the cushion away from underneath the head. Okay, we'll go into the next exercise, which is a preparation exercise for the abdominals. We'll switch cushions here. So those people, again, who have more severe pain in the back should have a triangular cushion, and this should be a comfortable position, either a triangular cushion or high pillows. Right. So I can have a small flat cushion as he's actually going to be moving his neck. Draw the knees up towards the chest. Keep the hands on the knees for the time being and gently extend the arms away from the body, just off the floor. Take the arms up to the ceiling for a breath in and breathe out as the arms come down towards the sides. Once again, take a breath in and breathe out. Now in this instance, there may not be an extreme amount of abdominal work going on. So what we're going to try and do is to get the abdominals working by drawing the ribs towards the hips on the breath out. Breathing into the ceiling and draw the ribs to the hips. As this exercise becomes a bit more effective, you can actually bring the knees away from the rib cage and slightly up. This will work the abdominals even more. And as we keep going to the next version, you can then lift the head gently forward, breathing out, and a slow breath in to relax. And a breath out, drawing the ribs to the hips and keeping the bee line, breathing in and releasing. And one more, breathing out, breathe in and release, and relax, bending the knees to the chest, and relax. The next exercise that we're going to go into is the hundreds. The preparation is vital for the hundreds because it actually gets the abdominal muscles going. So when we go into the hundreds, let's get the hands towards the knees, hugging gently so you can actually get a little bit of a stretch in the lower back, and now extending the arms forward again bringing the head forward by drawing the ribs to the hips and extending the legs into the air as comfortably as possible. In Joe's case, he can straighten the legs fully and flex the feet to give more of a stretch into the hamstrings. In Brooke's case, the knees are slightly bent with the knees above the rib cage because if the knees actually drew away from the rib cage, your back would arch. Breathing in for a five second count and a deep sigh out of the mouth. A deep breath in and a deep sigh out. If the neck starts to strain, we can rest the head back onto the cushion. If the back starts to strain after several breaths, either raise the legs higher or bend the knees slightly and continue. Keep the bee line as much as possible and the shoulder blades, if at all possible, in Joe's case, should be as high off the bench as possible without the rib cage lifting above the level of the hips. This is extremely important. Okay, and bend the knees to the chest, hug your knees, and relax. The next exercise is the single leg stretch. So drawing both knees up towards the chest, keeping the right hand on the right ankle, and extend the left leg into the air. Okay, changing legs, breathing in, and when changing legs, place the left hand on the left ankle. And again, breathing in as you change, 
and breathe out as you stretch. As you'll notice in Brooke's case, she's actually drawing both knees back before extending the one leg out. This is in cases of severe back pain or even medium to severe back pain. In Joe's case, his abdominal muscles are very strong, so he can do this exercise with the shoulder blades lifted off the floor. If there is any neck strain, place higher pillows underneath the head. If the back starts to strain after several exercises, raise the leg higher into the air. And again, breathing out as you stretch, lengthening through the toes, breathe in as you change legs, keeping the ribs to the hips and working on the bee line. Breathing in on the change and breathing out on the stretch. Breathing in, bend both knees back towards the chest and both knees back and relax. We'll now go into the double leg stretch. A little bit more of a difficult exercise. Once again, keep the head propped up if required, if the neck is straining. Extend both arms down by the sides. Extend both legs up into the air. Breathe in and take the hands up to the ceiling. And in Brooke's case, bring the hands straight down and in Joe's, a circle around. Bend both knees back towards you and relax, hugging the knees to the chest. Again, arms forward, head forward, legs up, breathe out. Breathe into the ceiling. Deep sigh out as the arms go into the circle or forward. Bend, breathing in, relax, hug the knees, and again breathing out. Press through the heels as much as possible, breathing into the ceiling, keeping the knees bent if there's any pressure in the back. Breathe out on the reach forward, and relax, breathing in. And one more. Breathing out, drawing the ribs to the hips, breathing into the ceiling, and breathing out to the sides and relax, hug the knees. Let's just recap a couple of the points on this exercise. Make sure that the head is always comfortable, so that there are cushions placed under the head, as in Brooke's case. In Joe's case, if the neck starts to strain, then we will place more cushions underneath the head after several repetitions. If the legs start to waver and lower, try to keep them higher or bend the knees to keep them closer to the chest, so that the stomach muscles are continuously working.